Video games. Video games. Video games. Video games. I love video games. In case you couldn't tell, I love video game franchises. In case you couldn't tell, the one thing I don't love is when video game franchises die, unless they need to die. There are many dead franchises out there that should absolutely come back and would be very good if they came back today. Now, the thing is, this is my personal opinion. Alright, certain franchises I don't want to see come back, and they won't be on this list. And other franchises only have one game in them, in which it's not necessarily a franchise, so they're not on the list. Stuff like Conquer and Bully. As much as I would love to see a new Conquer game and a new Bully game, that is just a franchise with one game, not gonna be on the list. Anyways, let's get started. I got ZPX here, counting down the top 10 dead video game franchises that need to be revived. Before we get started, you know what to do. Check it to subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment, or I will kill you. I wanted to give to you, in the last part of your notes here, the significance spiritually of the number 10 in the Bible. PlayStation have been killing it with their exclusive IPs as of late. They got some iconic franchises such as God of War, Ratchet and Clank, and Uncharted, but whatever happened to Jack and Daxter? I feel like a Jack and Daxter game made today for PS4 or PS5 would be great, and I'm sure it'll look like Jack and Daxter never missed a beat. From my research, Naughty Dog hasn't made a Jack and Daxter game in a while because they don't have enough time and resources for it. I don't quite get that. But also, I think it might just have something to do with the fact that Naughty Dog don't make those kind of games anymore. They focus their efforts on more linear, single-player, story-driven games like Uncharted or The Last of Us. Maybe Insomniac can take over and make a new Jack and Daxter game. I'm sure that would be great. So Streets of Rage 4 came out and it was awesome. TMNT Shredder's Revenge is coming out and it looks awesome. And there is another dead beat-em-up franchise that I think needs to come back. And that is Double Dragon. Double Dragon isn't the first beat-em-up game ever, but it was one of the first good ones. The franchise is a little hit or miss when it comes to quality. The first two games are great, the third one sucks, a lot of other games range from great to bad, but Double Dragon Neon is an underrated gem that got panned by critics for feeling primitive, but others saw it as a modernization of the classic. But then there was Double Dragon 4 on the Switch in 2017, looking like an NES game in 2017. It was bad. I feel like, though, if they made a, mo a more modernized version of Double Dragon, like Double Dragon Neon, or even give it to Dot .mu, who they know how to revive dead franchises. Hell, they made the aforementioned Streets of Rage 4 and are making the aforementioned TMNT Shredder's Revenge. I'm sure if that happens, we can get a very great Double Dragon game. So I'm going to be giving this flavor 8.5 out of 10 scoops. Nintendo has a lot of franchises that could be on this list. In fact, I'm sure I could have made a list of only Nintendo games. However, one Nintendo franchise that needs to come back is Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus has had a weird ride. It got a decent game on the NES and an egg game on the Game Boy. Then Pit appeared in Smash with a new design, as if there was a new game, except there wasn't. Then Kid Icarus Uprising came out for the 3DS, developed by Masahiro Sakurai who made Smash, and it was awesome. Now I know why Kid Icarus has kind of been dead since that game. The game didn't sell well, and Sakurai himself even said that he doesn't want to work on such a game if it's not going to sell too well. Something like that. So, while it isn't known for selling well, if Kid Icarus Uprising 2 comes out for the Switch, it would be foolish to ignore the huge install base for the Switch. Regardless of whether or not a new Kid Icarus game sells well, I'm sure that if it has Sakurai behind it, it'll be great. 
Very close, but that's not it. Let's go to Gary the Retard. What number between two and four? Seven. Just like Nintendo, Rareware is a company that can get a list of its own for the their franchises that are dead but need to come back. I'm not putting Conquer on the list, as I said. As amazing as Conquer's Bad Fur Day is, that's only one game. However, Killer Instinct is pretty badass, and I would love to see a new installment. Similar to Kid Icarus, Killer Instinct also has a weird ride. The first Killer Instinct game came out on the Super Nintendo and on arcade systems, and it was awesome. Has to be one of the best fighting games ever, and I love fighting games. Then Killer Instinct 2 came out for arcade systems, and it was a great game. And then Killer Instinct Gold came out for the N64, and I thought it was quite underrated. Then there was Killer Instinct 2013 for the Xbox One. It started as a free-to-play game, but almost as an early access game, as it later on got more and more characters and content, and as Season 3 came, it was awesome. But I want to see a new Killer Instinct game. You look at some fantastic fighting games today, like Guilty Gear Strive or MK11, and I can very well see a new Killer Instinct game coexisting with those. And hey, I don't know about you, but that might just get me to buy a Series X. I think this needs to happen. Even if it doesn't sell well, you have Game Pass. Do it, Microsoft. Okay, Mrs. Puff, what's my final score? Six. Woo! Mario, what hasn't this man done? Look at the sports. There's tennis, there's golf, there's baseball, there's fucking DDR, there's soccer, and yeah, you probably forgot about the soccer. Wait, whoa, 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 what is this? What? Oh no, oh my god. No way, this, this can't be. No way. Oh my god. No way. Mario Strikers? Oh my god. Oh my god. Mario Strikers? It's, it's back. It's back. Bad news about this, though, is that to redo the list. Luckily, I thought of a franchise that I can't believe I forgot earlier when making this list. And I know where I want to put it on the list. Just slide everything else from it up a spot. But what was number five is now number six. And hey, it's another Nintendo franchise. F-Zero. The given reasoning for the lack of a new F-Zero game is that Nintendo can't find any ways to innovate. Uh, really? Yeah, that really confuses me. I don't know why they feel that F-Zero is the franchise being held back by innovation. You can innovate with every Mario installment, with every Zelda game, Hell, you've innovated with Pokemon that has grown stale, and you're innovating with Kirby with the Forgotten Land that has always been sort of the safe game. But F-Zero is the game you just can't find a way to do something new for? Bull to the shit. I think all you gotta do is just make a new F-Zero game and modernize it for the Switch, and bam, you got a new F-Zero game. But even if we don't get a new F-Zero game, at least the franchise went out with a bang. Chills. Literal chills. It was number five. Number five killed my brother. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Now this is actually a top ten list I've been wanting to do for a while, but it took me a while to realize this. When you think of dead video game franchises that need to come back, I don't hear Ninja Gaiden brought up too much. Which is weird, because that is, in my opinion, the fourth biggest video game franchise that is dead that needs to come back. And it hasn't gotten a new installment since 2014 with Yeba Ninja Gaiden Z, which is a game, but don't let that deter you, because Ninja Gaiden, for the most part, is pretty awesome, and definitely deserves to come back. And I know that the Master Collection just happened last year, but that's not a new game. That's a collection of old games. However, at least that shows that Koei Tecmo remembers that Ninja Gaiden exists, and hey, maybe that is testing the waters to see if people want to play Ninja Gaiden. The only thing is I don't know if that's sold very well. But I think making a Ninja Gaiden game would work very well. Maybe Koei Tecmo can make it like a Souls-like game, as they are doing something similar for Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, which looks great by the way. Not to mention, Ninja Gaiden is already known for being extremely difficult, so it would make all the more sense to make it like a Souls 
Bloodborne game. Huh. Maybe Ninja Gaiden doesn't have a good track record when it comes to sales, but I think it is time to give the franchise another chance, and I'm sure it would be great. Somewhere on this list, I was going to have Castlevania, and somewhere else on this list, I was going to have Silent Hill. Metal Gear actually concluded, so let's let that one rest. However, as good as Silent Hill and as good as Castlevania are, Konami fucking sucks. Fuck you, Konami. So I don't want to see them piss on the graves of their beloved franchises. The reason I'm mentioning Konami, though, is because A... I'm gonna get comments about Castlevania and Silent Hill if I didn't mention them. And B, it got me thinking of another company that has enough dead franchises to make a top 20, and that is Sega. Call this cheating, but basically every Sega franchise that they haven't touched for the past however many years is on here. Think about it. If you're not Sonic, Yakuza, Bayonetta, Valkyria Chronicles, or anything from Atlas, you're fucking dead. Golden Axe, Gunstar Heroes, Jet Set Radio, Crazy Taxi, Skies of Arcadia, Knights, Shinobi, hell, even the Sega All-Stars games with the racing and the fucking tennis would be cool today. And hey, occasionally, and I mean occasionally, Sega will let a different company make a game like Streets of Rage 4, Shenmue 3, and occasionally they'll do something like Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, but they are few and far between. You look at the many Genesis collections out there, and you see just how many awesome IPs they have, and you fast forward to today, and Sega are just doing nothing with them. Sega! Buddy! Buddies? There's more than one of you. You do realize you own these franchises, right? Did you, like, forget that? Okay, this is after I recorded everything else. This is after Mario Strikers Battle League was announced, and this is the game I should have included earlier, Marvel vs. Capcom. Now to be fair, I feel it hasn't been long enough to completely rule out a new Marvel vs. Capcom game, but let's not kid ourselves, MVC is more or less dead. As a fan of fighting games, and as a fan of Marvel vs. Capcom, that's a huge bummer. I didn't even hate Infinite. Now with Disney owning Fox and with the MCU only getting bigger, I think a new Marvel vs. Capcom game would be really great, at least when it comes to the roster, which was a huge issue with Infinite because mainstays of the series like Doctor Doom, Wolverine, and Magneto were just not there. But if they want to make a new and a good new MVC game, you can't just fill out the roster. You also need to bring back teams of three and finish the fucking game before release and not just worry about DLC. That seemed like all they really cared about when it came to Infinite. Look, Smash Ultimate, Injustice 2, MK11, hell, Street Fighter V that had a similar launch came out with a fuck ton of DLC later on and it was awesome. If you want to make a new Marvel vs. Capcom game, you can't repeat that same mistake that you made with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And I get this might be the least likely of anything else on this list to come back because of licensing, but I can dream. What kind of pencil do we take again? Number two, take a number two. <laughs> Aside from Smash, my favorite video game franchise ever is Mega Man, and my god, Capcom should not be bastardizing it. Now with Mega Man being my second favorite franchise, why isn't it at number one? Well, I'm not 100% sure I can call Mega Man dead, as we did get Mega Man 11, it was really good, reportedly met Capcom's sales expectations, and started working on other Mega Man games. So there is a very solid chance Mega Man is not dead, but it's been like, what, three years since 
they've announced that and we've gotten nothing. Hell, it's been so long, people tend to forget that Mega Man 11 even ever happened. And the worst part is that it was a damn good game, so Capcom can easily make another Mega Man game like Mega Man 11 and it would be solid. I really don't get the reasoning behind Capcom's reluctance to make a new Mega Man game. I think there is some sort of audience for it, and with Mega Man's inclusion in Smash, it can get new fans too. I really believe Capcom are looking at the Mega Man franchise in a really ass-backwards way. Dude, he's your mascot! Mega Man is like the face of your company! What are you doing? Before we get to number one, let's look at some honorable mentions. When it comes to dead video game franchises, what franchise is one of, if not the first game that comes to mind? You might have said Banjo-Kazooie, and Banjo-Kazooie I think is the biggest example of a franchise needing to be revived. Like everything lines up. I think Banjo-Kazooie and Smash alone should be enough of a sign to bring back the Baron Bird duo for a new game because the insane reaction they got shows that they are still popular. On top of that, I think everyone is at least open to the idea of a Banjo-Kazooie return. Even younger gamers like me, who didn't grow up with Banjo-Kazooie, want to see these guys come back for a new game. Everyone wants to see Banjo-Kazooie return, it's still popular, the franchise has a great track record with Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, and nothing else after that. And Microsoft said that a new Banjo game is up to Rareware, but Microsoft, you own the franchise. Make a new game. Hell, even if it's Xbox exclusive, which it should be, but there were rumors a while ago saying it will be on the Switch, but even if it's an Xbox exclusive, that'll make people want to buy an Xbox. Don't make it a Series X though, because then you're just begging for no one to play it. Banjo-Kazooie is the number one dead video game franchise that needs to be revived. And honestly, I don't even think it's a question. Even Mega Man, my second favorite video game franchise, I think Banjo-Kazooie needs to be revived more. So that was my list of the top 10 video game franchises that need to be revived. What do you guys think? Do you agree or disagree? If you want to tell me your video game franchises that need to be revived, you don't have to follow the same rules I did. You don't have to, like, you know, say... If you want to include Conquer, you can. If you want to include Castlevania... It wasn't even a rule against Castlevania, it was just... Konami or not... It's just not gonna be the same with this Konami. Fuck you, Konami. Alright, anyways... Remember, be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell, leave a comment, or I will kill you, and not revive you. Bye, guys.